And the mayor normally joins us at this time every fortnight, but wasn't available. So uh, the council's put up Eddie Contal instead. Councillor, good morning. Good morning, Mitchell. How are you? Good. Thanks for being on the program. First of all, you've got a council meeting coming up tonight. Is it going to be as contentious as the last time that free parking was discussed? <laughs> um, well, I don't know. I guess that will remain to be seen. I don't think so. I think it's a pretty uh, simple uh, discussion and quite logical. Um, as you're probably aware, I am moving an urgent business item tonight. First of all, I hopefully that gets enough votes to be heard. Uh, but the whole intent is to continue to try and support uh, the community uh, as we, you know, transition through and navigate our way through COVID. And we know that a lot of people are struggling. That goes without saying. Uh, and so the intent is to extend um, free CBD uh, parking both on street and on, off street for council uh, owned and managed uh, facilities until uh, the end of the year. So it's a bit confusing because I think the free parking in two-hour spaces was going to continue, but the other spaces like the all day and the three-hour, uh, that was going to revert to paid parking this month, correct? But, geez, you know, I guess so. Uh, during stage three, uh, we actually had free parking throughout the CBD, yes. as I'm proposing tonight. Uh, then uh, when we, were, when we uh, worked our way through the stage three restrictions, uh, we reintroduced paid parking but maintained a two-hour uh, free parking in the CBD. Uh, and so this is now extending it back to what we had during stage three restrictions uh, some two months ago. And the budgetary hit you wouldn't think would be too much given that with stage three, a lot of people that would normally work in the CBD are now forced to work from home. That's right. I mean, obviously, there's some estimates that um, that that have been worked out. Um, we're sort of uh, indicating that uh, there could be some foregone revenue of about eight hundred thousand, but it's it's all a bit sceptical at the moment because we just don't know how many people are coming into the CBD and how many people will come into the CBD uh, over the coming months, and it really depends on how long stage three restrictions stay with us as well. When you ran in the last election, uh, free parking was really a major plank in your policy platform. I'm just wondering, is it going to be ever possible to get to your dream of free parking? Because one, uh, some of the other councillors don't seem too keen on it. And two, uh, it doesn't seem like the council can make up that budgetary shortfall. No, absolutely, I do. Um, uh, first of all, it's been very successful uh, since, the, since the campaign. Uh, we have introduced, as you know, a free 30-minute uh, parking. Uh, and since then, we have trialled uh, other, other uh, aspects of that. And, and obviously, COVID uh, has given us uh, the opportunity to also um, implement uh, parking measures. Uh, I, I personally feel that uh, charging for parking uh, is an antiquated approach. Uh, to encouraging uh, people uh, to into a CBD that you want to be vibrant and bustling. It's old school thinking. And what we should be doing is trying to create an amazing customer experience rather than threatening people uh, with fines and, and, and costs of parking uh, to come into the CBD where they can go to other areas of Geelong and not have that uh, restriction on them. So I really think it's old school thinking. So to answer your question, I will continue to fight hard for it. And I think a lot of people are starting to get on board. Uh, yeah, I said that much yesterday that when you park in the CBD, you almost feel like a criminal because people are coming around to find you. And before you park, you have to anticipate how long you're going to be staying there. Whereas if you go to Packington Street or Heighton, the other popular shopping strips, you don't have to do the same thing. That said, the app has improved things with the parking, although I believe that actually costs more um, than if you pay through the, uh, the meter, the machine. Uh, but at the same time, it's something that's got to be looked at. And I suppose if you don't get the revenue from parking and fines, it's just got to be obtained from somewhere else or you have to cut services. Yeah, but I don't think you need to cut services. You're correct in saying that. But uh, there's, if there's other ways of, um, of generating revenue. And if you've got a vibrant, uh, bustling CBD and the heart uh, of Geelong, there are opportunities for us to generate revenues in other manners that, that are still proactive uh, and, and uh, benefit the, the community other than just taking money uh, out of people's pockets to park their car. I, I really do think that that is old school thinking. 
And yesterday on the program, we talked about free parking, perhaps for emergency services workers. And I see there's a letter to the editor in today's paper written by you that has a similar um, thought or a similar point of view. Is that an idea that may be considered even when we revert to paid parking, maybe giving the people that work at the hospital some sort of parking freedom or some sort of reduction in rates? P potentially, but that's assuming we return to paid parking. <laughs> hmm. um, but uh, yes, the, the, the notice of motion tonight is intended to support the entire community. So whether you're a, a central services worker, uh, a permitted worker, uh, whether you're someone that has to come into the CBD through necessity uh, to give care, to receive care, uh, whatever that may be, uh, that is the intent of tonight's urgent uh, business um, item. And it is urgent because, as we know, uh, the Premier has declared Victoria as a state of disaster and as such we must react in that way and the, and the community is looking upon us to take prompt action and to show leadership and that's why I'm moving this tonight. Before your letter in today's paper there's a letter from someone called Rosemary Kiss who has described your CBD task force as a train wreck and says your friend Darren Lyons is on there and says it's a train wreck and you know obviously there's been talk about conflicts of interest etc so how do you respond to all of that? Well, it's, 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 it's quite an ignorant um, letter, really, uh, because um, the task force is not my task force. The task force is, is um, a, an initiative that council uh, has adopted. And, and the reason we've adopted that is, once again, uh, we want to be able to navigate uh, out of the COVID um, environment that we're in uh, and come out of that with uh, a healthy central business district. So who else... Uh, should we be asking other than the broader community when we, which we have, uh, but those stakeholders uh, and investors that, that um, work uh, and, and generate a living out of being in that area every day. And so we're really, we really called upon uh, those um, interested parties to nominate, uh, to put themselves down, to voluntarily uh, give their time uh, and their advice uh, to, the, to the council on what they feel uh, we should be looking at uh, on, on four, uh, four or five particular points. One being public transport servicing the CBD, uh, on and off uh, street parking in the CBD, which is very topical, which we've been, just been talking about. Mm -hmm. The Central Geelong Marketing Committee, uh, the Central Geelong Marketing Levy and commercial rates. We just want feedback uh, and input on those areas because they've been very topical uh, not only over this term of council, but over many terms. And Counsel Councillor Anthony Aitken and I have been fielding a lot of questions around this, given that he holds the uh, finance portfolio. So we said, let's ask those that are impacted most by this and have, a, ha have an interest in this to give us some feedback. And so whilst it's easy to indicate that Darren Lyons has put his name down, and so, so be it, he's a, he's a business owner in the, um, in the CBD, but so have many other um, uh, excellent um, uh, people within our community, such as Michael De Stefano from Gartland, who's also a director on the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Gillian Costa uh, from uh, Cunningham Pier, um, you know the Hamiltons. So there's some great people that have put their their names down, which I think we're going to um, obtain some fantastic feedback, and we should be really uh, extremely pleased that they're giving up their time uh, for for no reward whatsoever, other than. Uh, to be able to give back to, to, to Geelong and hopefully help us uh, continue to drive improvement uh, throughout the CBD, which we know it needs. What do you think is the big thing that the CBD needs when you talk about some of the different areas, like parking, for example? Is there sort of one big idea that you have that could transform the CBD? Well, th there are many aspects, uh, as you mentioned, parking, I'm not going to go on about it too much longer, but of course that, that plays a, a big part in it. Um, safety and security uh, are obviously paramount, and uh, we've been trying to work on that as well with uh, what was occurring uh, in the Little Mallock Street mall end uh, of, uh, of Little Mallock Street. So that, that's very, very important. Um, but I suppose one of the ideas that I have and where I take my uh, inspiration from is uh, one of the most famous avenues in the world uh, and the finishing stage for the Tour de France, which is the Champs-Élysées Avenue in Paris. And 
you know, we, we could do worse than to look at uh, avenues and boulevards such as that nature, and, and that could be our Mirable Street. So with the champs uh, you, you may be familiar, but it's a, it's, a, it's a large avenue that runs right through the middle of Paris. Uh, there is uh, some uh, stipulations on the criteria that you must fit to actually have uh, a facility or a building or a shop in that area. In fact, it's uh, all white signage. It's the only uh, white McDonald's sign, in fact, uh, in the world that's in uh, that street. And all the street signs are white. They have beautiful lighting. They have a avenue-style street frontage. And uh, certainly from what I'm aware of, they don't have buses uh, driving up and down uh, the shops, and they certainly don't have a bus terminal from what I'm aware. So I think there's real inspiration that we can take uh, and and whilst it doesn't need to be the same, we can put our own stamp uh, on it. There's things like that that we could do uh, in our CBD uh, to make it far more attractive than what it is today. Do we keep the palm trees? Well, uh, I think it needs trees. Whether it's palm trees or not uh, would probably be uh, a matter of discussion. And the buses, I mean, yeah, it's a good idea maybe to get rid of the buses from there, but where do they go if not there? Well, I mean, look, this has been talked about probably as much as free parking has mm. over the years. But there's always, uh, f first of all, I, I think uh, personally that sending those large buses into the CBD is not the right solution either. We need the, the large buses coming into a terminal, whether it be at the Geelong Railway Station or, or another location, and then having sh smaller shuttle buses uh, uh, shuffling people into the CBD. And, um, you know, you ever look at Packington Street, for instance, sometimes you're in Packington Street and you see this large bus coming up the road and, and really there's two or three people on it. We, 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 what we need is a central hub and then smaller uh, solutions of transport allowing people to get in and out of the CBD uh, quickly and not, not, not clogging it up with big buses. I saw recently you spoke about vandalism. We've had some big problems, I think, around the radio station with vandalism and graffiti. What do you think we need to do, and preferably to try and stop the vandalism before it happens rather than trying to clean it up? Yeah, it, it's, oh, it, it's really one, that, uh, one of my bugbears, uh, this one, and it is something that I'm now starting to work on uh, quite strongly, in fact, with the mayor as well. Um, and I'll say it again, as I've said it before, we really need to do you know, all we can to secure our community assets and facilities from, from the ignorance, uh, selfish and, and, and the scum of society who take great pleasure from others' misfortune. And we see this all the time. We see the thieves and the vandals and, and the gutless of this world who just love to play on the vulnerable and, and ruin beautiful assets that are out there in the community that have been paid for by the community. How many times have we seen uh, a, a great uh, um, playground put in place with disability uh, facilities in there as well, those beautiful uh, large round swings that uh, you know a week later are either stolen or vandal to the point where they need to then be replaced. So uh, it's not an easy one, Mitchell, but one of the things uh, we're working on at the moment and talking to officers is to try to give council the absolute most capacity to be able to enforce the strongest possible infringements and fines and also to be able to take the legal action that is required to take, bring these people to task if and when uh, they are uh, found out to be the culprit. That's also not simple. We need to work on more um, security within those uh, facilities as well, whether it be CCTV or whether it be patrols. But that is something that uh, we're currently working on and uh, I'm doing that in conjunction with the Mayor. There's an article in today's paper. It says council land backflip about Esperance Crescent in Highton. It seems the council originally planned to sell that land, but there's been some sort of community backlash or a petition, and I think it's now going to a vote tonight. Is that right? It is, and this is um, 34 to 40 Esperance Crescent Height, I think is what you're referring yes. to. And, and this is a good thing. I mean, this is exactly what should happen in council. So council have obviously put up... Uh, uh, and, and uh, initiative to um, sell off some surplus land. Uh, and in fact, we, we need to continue to look at our assets and our land holdings to make sure that they're appropriate for what we require, because we also need uh, to invest funds into other facilities. But the community, the heightened community, have been extremely strong uh, in their views. There's been you know, uh, over 100 submissions 
put through to council, which is uh, appropriate on the back of the notice that was put out. Uh, more than 550 odd uh, signatures on a petition, and certainly Councillor Ron Nelson has been the eyes and ears for us out there, and and he's been advocating to, uh, on behalf of the community to say, look, the community don't want us to sell this land. It's five thousand odd square metres of land. It's great open space. Could be an excellent uh, uh, playground. Uh, you know, we've just been talking about that. Uh, great, great area for people to be able to exercise and spend time. Let's reconsider uh, selling it and let's look at investing it, investing in it to provide um, other services and opportunities for the community. So what will happen tonight, I'm not sure, but uh, I think it's been a, a great exercise and it's good that Council are at least listening uh, to the community and well done to the Heighton community for being so strong in their opinion. To finish off with, the election is coming up in October and you've said that you're going to run again. What do you think this election is going to be fought and uh, won on or lost on? Because it's clearly going to be a different environment campaigning with COVID. And so far, it seems like there's not as many candidates perhaps as last time around, but maybe they're all waiting to announce themselves. Uh, what do you think are going to be the big issues this time around? Well, I mean, it's been a very short term. It's been three years, uh, but a lot has happened, and there's no doubt that uh, you know COVID uh, has been uh, a significant impact on the community, and people are uh, really desperate for uh, strong leadership, uh, uh, strong representation, and and also support. Uh, I think this council's done a good job in that regard. Uh, you know, got some support packages out there about ten point seven million dollars already, and and tonight's uh, urgent motion on the on the parking, uh, if it gets over the line, will add to that. Um, I think it'll be on on those um, on those particular uh, matters of supporting the community, uh, making sure that uh, they're getting the most out of the rates that they are paying. Uh, council, uh, making sure that we're looking after the vulnerable and the elderly, and also making sure that uh, we're caring for our environment. So I think I think all of those things, which continue to be you know big ticket items uh, in every election, but more so than than others this year because of COVID, people are very scared and they want stability and they want to make sure that they can uh, trust and rely on, on their leaders to navigate them through what's a very uncertain period of time. Well, Councillor Contell, thank you very much for your time this morning. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Mitchell. Really appreciate you having me on. No worries. Councillor Eddie Contell joining us there. Uh, Mayor wasn't available today. She's normally in this spot every fortnight. Uh, so the council sent in Councillor Eddie Contell and said he's putting his hand up to go again to run for election in October.